is hiring. They're looking for hardworking, self-motivated individuals who are team players. Iron High Construction has openings for an experienced project manager, estimator, apprentice, skilled laborer, and erector or installer. They will train the right people and make sure you understand the position and requirements. At Iron High Construction, it's own it, be honest, and do it right. Apply today and learn more about their other benefits at ironhideconstruction.com, where they're committed to you every step of the way. Sandhills Global is hiring. With their fast-paced, growing culture, they have hundreds of new openings in sales, marketing, traveling support, software development, web design, and more. Full-time roles offer a four-and-a-half-day work week, along with flexible internships in most areas. Career and internship opportunities are available at our global headquarters in Lincoln, Nebraska. Find your fit today at www.sandhills.jobs. Take your internet service to new levels with Allo, your award-winning internet provider across our fiber hoods. Allo isn't just about the fastest internet available. It's about connecting you to your world, work, and play seamlessly. Our award-winning service ensures affordable, secure, and reliable connectivity, setting us apart. Ready to transform your internet experience? Experience the fiber difference today. Sign up now at allofiber.com. Allo. Your sprinklers are watering the street or flooding your backyard. If you're on a list that doesn't exist, it's time for Judson Irrigation. At Judson Irrigation, Lee or Lacey or Judson will make an appointment. You pick the time and they'll be there to fix your sprinkler system. Now that's service, a dying art these days. Keep summer green. Call Judson Irrigation, 402-420-6277 or JudsonIrrigation.com. Your business runs like a well-oiled machine. It's important that your actual machines do too. Stern is here to make sure you don't have to worry about that. They provide solutions for heavy equipment and automotive fuels, lubricants, and equipment guard options. And with Stern's commitment to customer service for the past 40 years, you know you have a partner to help support your operations for years to come. Contact Roger at Stern Company by calling 1-800-477-2744 or visit them online at stern.co. Stern Company, where problems meet solvers. My dream was to work in commercial banking, but it required a college degree and I didn't have one. I found out that Doan had classes for adult learners on the Lincoln campus and online. So I earned my bachelor's degree and five months later, I landed my dream job. I decided to continue my education and now I'm working on my MBA at Doan. For me, the Doan experience has been life-changing. Road construction is complete, so there's nothing keeping you from getting into Mullen Motors. They can get you into a new vehicle right now and get your 2024 started off the right way. They cleared off their 2023 inventory and have tons of new vehicles to choose from to make sure you get to where you need to be this year. Out with the old and in with the new. Stop by Mullen Motors today, just north of 48th and Layton in Lincoln. No tagline, just quality vehicles. Mullen Motors. Coming at you live from the heart of Lincoln, America, this is Old School. Sponsored by the Mercado by Certified Piedmontese. Broadcasting veteran Derek Pearson. When you find something that moves them, that makes them smile, celebrate it. That's your task. That's your superpower. Nebraska Football Hall of Famer Jay Foreman. Life was a pass. It was tipped. It's picked off by Foreman. He's at the 15. Grand final score. On 937 the ticket and the ticketfm.com. What up, Jay Foreman, Austin Norman, DP, I think is either back or on his way back. Um, from San Diego with Supernovas. We are old school, brought to you by the Mercado, certified P T, special ingredients to butcher shop. Two locations in Lincoln, 84th and Havelock, 30th and Yankee Hill, every type of meat and every type of cut. Um, if you listen to the stream before on the crossover with me and Strick. I I have survived. I have I have survived. I mean that was full on just dodging bullets ever since I got here. <laughs> that forty five minutes before I got out there, but I love it though, man. I, the the uh, uh the, you know kind of the uncut kind of off the whim stuff, and it's still good radio, good time though, because I got plenty of love for Strick. But um, uh, anyways, look, man, it, it's. It, it, Obviously, we're going to talk a little NFL news. Obviously, do some spring ball stuff. 
And then we're going to talk about the transfer portal. Not only Nebraska's, uh, you know, I think has six players now in the transfer portal, but just overall, you know, they had a, um, there's plenty of, you know, rankings of transfer portal guys, right, in basketball. And I think they have, and I'm going to get into it a little bit later, A.J. Storr, who's, uh, you know, pretty well known in the Big Ten, uh, came to Wisconsin, by the way, St. John's is at a lot of sites, the number one ranked portal guy right now. Um, you talking about betting on yourself and, 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 and uh, you know, being the, you know, the gambler. The thing I wrote, read is like, yeah, take some cojones. Um, considering the place that you were going, considering that, um, uh, well, Kansas already picked up a, Kugel from um, uh, Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, that, Zeke Mayo, Summit Player yeah, of the right, Year. Yeah, so but, yeah, but still, you already picked somebody up in your position. Same, mm-hmm. similar build, six five guard. You know, stores supposed to be six six. That takes some. Uh, that takes some cojones. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And uh, but we're going to start off. Uh, you know, obviously with the big news of the day. Started really early, uh, Austin, which you probably mm-hmm. know. And it, it, I can't be. I, I'm mad. I have a, I have a, like a array of emotions, not surprised. I'm happy. It happened. I'm mad. It happened. And then I'm elated. Mm. Right. In that order. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not surprised that Steph, if you haven't known, Stefan Diggs got traded from the Buffalo bills to the Houston, Texas. Family so, to family, family to family. And, and he's like some, he's related to me somehow. Or I'm, <laughs> we're related somehow, which is crazy. My dad was telling me about it, about him, and, and you know whatever. Um, but no, by no means, you know we you know, we close. But is I'm not surprised considering how you know the season started last year and the off season, and how the previous season ended in the playoffs, mm. and where he you know where where he was mic'd up and you know in a roundabout way questioned Josh Allen. Um, and then, so I'm not surprised because this was like the year, you know, they didn't ask him to restructure. So you knew his salary cap number would be extremely high. Uh, a very productive player, four four straight Pro Bowls, four straight thousand yard seasons. But this year just was a little different, right? It wasn't the same Stefan Diggs. Now, I don't think it was because he had lost a step. I think there was emergence of, of some other guys and they had, you know, a pretty good draft and they ran the ball more. So mm-hmm. the, it, there are circumstantial stuff there. But, it was probably time. I think he wore out his welcome and he wore out wanting to be there. And that's just sometimes when you're dealing with a, you know, high energy, phenomenal player, big personality, high maintenance diva type of receiver. Um, I'm sad because I feel like the connection with him and Josh Allen had the potential. I didn't. We haven't seen the best yet, mm. um, because they're two great players. I think they're they're both savvy enough, and they're so good at football that they if they could have just focused on football and figured it out, they could have took transform form their game as a as a duo, because of the the Josh Allen skill set and his ability to be creative in his releases, route running, and stuff like that. I just felt like it would have been kind of Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey s. Mm. Um, and then I'm mad because he got traded from Buffalo, and it feels like Gabe Davis is gone. That's wide receiver number two. Stefan Diggs is gone, wide receiver number one. Um, no matter what you do in draft, there's nobody really to pick up unless you get T. Higgins. You'd have to trade for it. You'd trade for, and you'd have to probably give you know trade some stuff that you're getting back, but. You still get the continuity is not going to be there, and mm-hmm. T Higgins isn't Stefan Diggs, and Diggs isn't T Higgins. No, so you don't know if it's going to work. I know that works, mm-hmm. and I know it can work even better than it did last year. Um, it's thirty mil in dead money right. on the books right now, right. which is so a lot. Right, so you still have Stefan Diggs. <laughs> you got you got the remnants. It's like a, a bad fart, you know. <laughs> yeah, dude, he's still he's still there, <laughs> still sniffing. Yeah, still sniffing it, boy. It's, it's there, and so. But then I'm elated that the Houston Texans are doing something that they've never done before. Hmm. I mean, when you think about it, we're not, I wouldn't say never. I mean, they've had some really good, look, when you draft JJ Watt 
And uh, so they've done it. They draft Andre Johnson. What I'm saying is this, right? I, especially from my perspective, you got a franchise quarterback um, that you fell into, but you had the best draft. Then you got the, the best player in the draft, that Will Anderson, right? On the defensive side, two foundation pieces, great locker room guys, community guys, and, and great fo- and love football. And you drafted before. Um, you, you know, you got Nico Collins and you got, you got everything you need, you know, and you drafted, you got Larry Tunsil and all that. And you, and you had a great transition to D'Amico Ryans and what he wanted to do on defense and the defense played well, even though you lost like Blake Cashman and stuff like mm-hmm. that still feel like he's replaceable because, you know, he was kind of a journeyman that got a sh- true opportunity player. You can kind of replace that, but they drafted well. Right. Um, and did some, and then you go and get mixing in, in free agency. That can be your thumper. Your your safety net come out of the backfield, really good in pass protection. So you're doing things for the betterment of the franchise quarterback in the franchise, mm-hmm. right? And you got Nico Collins, and and then you had Tank uh, that he he was lighting the league on fire, but he got hurt. So that's your slot, right? And you could say, okay, we'll see what you do at number two. Well, then you just hit it out of the park. We go get a go get a number one legit wide receiver. Mm-hmm. There you go. Are are you? Along with Schultz at the tight end position right. that you needed to get back because of the the continuity and connection mm-hmm. with the CJ Stroud. Kept Slowick. Yep, kept Slowick. And is yeah, which is huge. Mm-hmm. Um now he didn't get the type of offers that he wanted, but he it helped him that he came back. So the continuity is there. That hasn't on all facets, it hasn't been there. Mm-hmm. You know, like we had a really strong defense when I was there. David Carr was there. You get Andre, no offensive line, no running back. Okay, you got Andre. Okay, who's number two? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, okay, you get a little bit around, and then you, you know, David Carr, you're not good enough because we're, you know, all of a sudden, you know, it's your fault that you didn't have all the pieces in place early in your career. All right, we'll go, we'll go get Matt Schaub. Matt Schaub. Mm-hmm. Well, he, he's known to throw picks when at the least, at the worst time possible, <laughs> right? <laughs> yep. and you, but you keep making the playoffs. Then you go get JJ Watt and all those guys, um, Brian Cushing and. You know, all the, you know, they have another great defense. Then you go through a downturn, right? Bad hires. Um, Rick Smith's uh, wife, unfortunately, passes away. Goes to Bill O'Brien. It changes the whole dynamic. So now Rick Smith was a little squirrely at times, but the biggest mistake he made was getting Brock Osweiler sight unseen mm. because you were desperate for a quarterback. That's his biggest mistake. Along with Bill, Bill, you know, with Bill, with with Bill O'Brien, or I think it was Bill O'Brien, or maybe um, Kubiak. Then they kind of ran Kubiak out, and then now they started making some great moves. And not only did they have a great off season, they did it pretty good financially, and then they also did it for the betterment of the quarterback in their franchise. It's like it's like they very rarely do you see a franchise start out the way Houston did, which you normally do have success, go through a tragic downturn from David Cauley to Lovey Smith, you know, to interviewing, um, you know, uh, Damien Heward for the, you know, Heinz Ward. They were, they were interviewing dudes. That you could just interview me for the job, <laughs> right? You, and nobody really wanted the job. It seemed like nobody really wanted to go there free agency unless you had to overpay. And then, like, you know, Cal McNair gets the full ownership, right, for the betterment of the franchise, and then you start to see the continuity going. So I'm 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 related for the city of Houston and the franchise. There's so many different angles we can go on this. And since yeah. we're on stream, I just want all your thoughts here. Let's have a big segment. Let's start with the Stefan Diggs elements of this. Yeah. Do you think we see a a resurgent fired up Stefan Diggs? Do you think that was the biggest problem in Buffalo was the mindset? Or is he aging and maybe there's some physical decline? What do you expect from him next year? I think you're gonna I think you're gonna see the next two years is the, a, a good year from him. Um, now, granted, you got to think, you know, he has he's he's not going to be able to be a volume receiver in Houston because of the emergence of Nico Collins and, 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 and Tank coming back and then Schultz and, and, and those guys. But what I think is you, you, you're going to see a motivated, refocused um, number one receiver that's still trying to prove that he's one of the top, say, eight guys in the league. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he realized he slipped a little bit. I think if he if he has some humility and understands that um you know that 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 touchdown that you dropped against Kansas City could be a hall of fame catch it was a super bowl catch you mm-hmm. you catch that 
Buffalo's in the Super Bowl. Could Buffalo beat San Francisco? I'd like to say so. So those are the things that you have to live with, but it could motivate a guy like that. Now they're they're gonna have to make sure that they come to some sort of some sort of agreement on the contract. Mm -hmm. Because that's when when trades when those these type of players get traded, they when you get there, they redo your contract. We've seen it all off season. Yeah. Um on the contrary, when I got traded, <laughs> I was on a tender. And they were trying to redo my contract. They said, <laughs> and they had all this salary cap space, man. You get your roster yeah. spot, you like it. Yeah, they was like, you got to earn it. Man, I was, I had the only thing I got was number 56, man. I was like, man, I need the number 56. And the dude named Jason Lamar, uh, he called himself Black Cat. Uh, that was, he, that's how he, he, he named himself. He, he was 56, and I got I took his number, and he was a little mm. salty. But then, you know, he ended up being 58. We was locker room, uh, or, or, you know, lock, we were locker room mates, but they are locker mates. Um, so I, I think I think you're gonna see the couple years. The biggest thing Stefan Diggs has to understand, and this is the hardest thing at the receiver position. See what Terrell Owens. Terrell Owens never got Stefan Diggs really didn't have does never had any off off the field issues. Mm -hmm. Maybe small, but nothing, nothing we've seen worse. <laughs> off, the, off the field and locker room are different. Right. But the locker room is so huge because mm -hmm. it becomes when you're dominant like he was in Minnesota. And look, he look. He should have been drafted way before the fifth round, mm -hmm. right? Coming, Minnesota got a steal. Oh yeah, he turns into an All Pro. Mm -hmm. He gets traded and continues to do so. But as he's as that star has started to become brighter, so is the personality. And then you got to be able to make sure when you start to become brighter, and even you have this bigger personality, you got to be able to maybe pick and choose your spots and make sure it's more calculated. I mm -hmm. think he operated off way too much emotion. Calling your franchise, you ain't gonna never win calling your franchise quarterback out. That part, he's going to a place that has a franchise quarterback. I mean, CJ Stroud balled out mm -hmm. last year. Does Stefan Diggs need to realize that he's there for CJ Stroud, not vice versa? He needs to, he need he that's where you can have a like reformation of you. You can add years to your career and get to the promised land, which if is if you if he does it right, potentially to a Hall of Fame where you can just get those years where you don't have to have a thousand yards. You could always be like 900, eight. You could be that guy, right? And you'd be like, man, he played 15 years. I don't even remember, but he kept getting six, seven, eight hundred yards. Is if you get there, get a new contract and take what you learned in Buffalo, both good, bad, and indifferent, and bring it down and give it to a sponge like CJ Stroud mm -hmm. and create a real relationship with him. Not built on ego. CJ, this is his team. It's not your team. Mm -hmm. Because I think when 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 Stefan went to Buffalo, Josh Allen needed Stefan. Yes. And then Josh Allen leapfrogged him. Mm. Now you're coming to Houston. CJ Stroud don't need you, need you, bro. That did slew foot is uh, hey, <laughs> slew foot slanger is is that he's that dude. He's mm -hmm. he's him. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need you. Now, what you can do is take him to the next level, and he'll take you with him. Mm -hmm. And if you take that approach, you'll win more, you'll create a legacy there, and that legacy will spread throughout the NFL, and then you'll be able to go to the next place. You'll be the guy that still can be productive as a number one receiver, say a 1B instead of a 1A or even a 2A, that teams will look to. Man, he changed his attitude. Look, uh, the change of scenery has been great. He's really in, in embraced the, you know, the Houston Texans way with – D'Amico Ryan, you get D'Amico Ryan saying something great about you. You get, you know, the GM, you get Slowick and say Slowick goes somewhere and they go and draft whatever quarterback they have. He's mm -hmm. going to bring you with in a couple years. And so that's where he's got to make sure what we talked about with the in the NBA with the young guys, you got to be the older veteran to pat to pay it forward, but then also make sure you're taking care of yourself as well. If he does that, it's all it's going to work out in Buffalo or work out in Houston real well. Is this the all-in move for Houston? Is there more on the table? They got, you got you got to you got to make a you got to we'll see with the draft, but you mm -hmm. would like to get another real deal playmaker. Now you got De um Daniel Hunter. So now you got two edge guys. Autry's pretty right. solid Autry's in the middle. Right, right. But you got Daniel Hunter coming off 16 sacks. Mm -hmm. And then you got Will Anderson. Again, look what they're doing here, and I'm not saying this is because of Houston. It's actually a really good game plan. Whether it's D'Amico Ryan's and their, their whole, you know, general manager and the whole decision making department is like every important player that they drafted, 
in the last, say, two or three drafts. And let's just, it, it, right? Let's go, okay, you go defense. You got Daniil Hunter, right? Will Anderson, pretty much the same player at different parts of their career. Mm. You bring in um, Diggs with Nico Collins and Tank. Stingley is there on right, defense. Right, Stingley there on defense, right? And then you think C.J. Stroud that's going to benefit off of that. Then you got to think Laramie, Laramie Tunsil and um, Howard, the, the right tackle. So you got the guy that's the highest paid and probably the top two or three left tackle teaching the young buck how it goes, right? And so those are the those are like the pillars of your franchise, mm -hmm. and that's what you have to do. You you like it at, in, whether it's pros, college, or high school. That's what you want, and that's what they've done so done at a really good level. Now they 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 got to find a way to replace Malik Collins mm -hmm. because of what I think what Malik Collins did. He's a great locker room guy. He's a veteran. He's trusted, and also he taught the young guys how to play but he still was very productive. Mm -hmm. He was an extension of D'Amico Ryan's. Now, maybe his salary cap and what he commanded wasn't going to be up because he's a little bit long in the tooth, but replacing that, it's intangible sometimes that you can't replace right away. So that's when you need your linebackers to step up. Well, Blake Cashman's gone. Now, was he all pro S? No, but he played really well, and he's at Minnesota right now. It's kind of like a switcheroo there with Daniel Hunter. So you mm -hmm. got to replace those guys. If they are able to get some guys later in free agency or not, you know what I mean? Kind of, you know, maybe a late release or, you know, or something like that. They'll be just fine. I like a lot of what Houston did. I think they're really going to keep challenging for second in the AFC South moving forward. Let, let's flip <laughs> this over to Josh Allen here. Uh, you talked about, you know, the positives for Houston. Yeah. I feel like for Josh Allen moving forward this season, you know, barring wide receiver help in the draft for Buffalo is going to feel a lot like this past season did for Kansas City where yeah. it was a lot on Mahomes to elevate that receiving core. You mentioned Josh Allen has taken the leap, you know, over Stephon Diggs made it his team. That's undeniable. Yeah. Just how important is this season for Josh Allen in the scope of his whole career and what he wants to accomplish in Buffalo? Man, if I'm Josh Allen, I'm having some real conversations with my team, mm -hmm. with not my, not Buffalo, with my agent. Mm -hmm. You know, I know, uh, I just saw it. I don't know if, I, I don't think it was April Fool's, but I think him and his girlfriend, they're having a kid. Mm -hmm. Um, the actress or whatever, and that's probably why the, him and the other one broke. Bro. <laughs> hey, listen, man, you play in Buffalo, you dating like in models and stuff. You out kicked your coverage, brother, and you and you you was playing in Wyoming. You know, you, you Wyoming. Yeah, you really doing a big. You went from Laramie to Buffalo. Now you're out in, out in L.A. But you know, to each his own. If I'm him, my agent, I'm not talking to you on the phone. You better be out here, and mm -hmm. we need to spend a couple days trying to figure out. Plan A, Plan B, and Emergency C, because plan not in the team facility. You're in some rundown motel uh, off the beat. Uh, no, we're, you, know, you come right out there. He's got a nice house out there. Okay, yeah, there's no reason. You just, we pop up the garage. You probably okay. take an Uber from the airport, or whatever. <laughs> you know, no, but they need to have you got to have conversations. The reason why is Josh Allen is a top five quarterback. Is he top two? I'd argue he's top two. He didn't have a Super Bowl yet. He does not. But he's he's a bad man. Mm -hmm. It's a bad dude. It's a way, but because that's the debate Nick and I were having. Like, is Josh Allen the second best quarterback of the Mahomes yeah. era? Yeah, but you, but you, but you're like, you're like, uh, Philip Rivers. You, you, yeah, or no, you're like, you're like Clyde Drexler to Jordan. You you're, that's who you are. Hmm. Right now, Clyde got one or two. When Jordan wasn't there. Yeah, when Jordan, <laughs> when Jordan was chilling, but, but the reason why he has to meet with his people is, you got to figure it out and you can't be in the team facility or talking to the team because the team only cares about the team. Mm -hmm. They don't care about, they care about Josh Allen, but they care about Josh Allen. Everything's conditional. Yeah. Right. What can Josh Allen do for that? Why do I, why, you, my while you're, this while guy? you're this dude, they're going to do what's they They love you, but they're going to, they showed you they're going to do what's best for them mm -hmm. because this isn't even close to what Kansas city went through <laughs> this year, because you want to know why? Because at the end of the day, and we saw it against the Baltimore Ravens. Patrick Mahomes can play pitch and catch with Travis Kelsey and end up in, and win a Super Bowl. Josh Allen doesn't have that. Mm -hmm. Knox is good. He's not Travis Kelsey. Kincaid is good. He, he's not Travis Kelsey. Both of them combined are not Travis Kelsey. Mm -hmm. Travis Kelsey is one of the top four or five tight ends of all time. My favorite in this era 
um, is probably Gronk. You got to think he's up there with Shannon Sharp, um, Ozzie Newsom, Tony Gonzalez, you know, uh, Antonio Gates. It, it, he's up there, and he might be. He's ahead of. He's going to break every record. Mm -hmm. Josh Allen doesn't have that. No. Yes, you brought back back uh, uh, Dawkins and in that, but you lost Gabe Davis. You and you lost Stephon Diggs, personality or not. That's all your passing yards. Yeah. So if I'm Josh Allen. I'm trying. I'm actually trying to find a like put it all out there. Okay, what do you think? The what do you think? But what have you been hearing? Buffalo is going to do. What if they do nothing? What if they draft somebody? Now the only thing that would make him feel comfortable is somehow you get up there and you get Marvin Harrison Jr. in the in the fourth pick. I don't think that's going to happen because Arizona needs him and they want him and they take. I don't know if Buffalo has the draft capital or the even the player capital to mm -hmm. to get that fourth pick. So if I'm Josh Allen, we are having straight up conversations and checkpoints in my career of what they do and what they don't do because I'm gonna have a game plan and my I'm my agent's gonna do a lot of talking. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, if things don't start to move to where we start to recoup some production that we lost, I'm out of there. And he's got he's has to because if he doesn't, his I wouldn't say his career is over. His career becomes his legacy's over. His legacy is over, but then the playing football becomes three times harder. Right. You're going to take more hits. You're going to get more criticism. And you're going to go from a top two quarterback to just, you know, top 12. To and, Dak Prescott. And, right. And that's a big drop for him. Mm -hmm. That's a huge drop for him because he's worked so hard from the accuracy issues coming out of college mm -hmm. to being actually one of the most accurate. He's he's starting to come, overcome his his uh, red zone issues based on play calling and then also being playing a quarterback. But well, two outside guys are gone. This is the year that he has to prove it that he has been working on those things and take his game to a different level. Yeah. But uh, the last thing I have for you is the, the Buffalo aspect of this. Not only did they get rid of Stephon Diggs, they gave up draft capital and they're eating thirty million dollars. Tells me it's an untenable situation in GMJ Foreman. Where do they go from here? What what do you do? What's next? You got to hope that there's a training camp roster move. You got to hope that something somebody has an offseason issue and you you gamble and you win. You got to hope that somebody's looking for a shot and they you know say they were kind of a two, number 2 and you know they want to become a number 1 and they come or you hit the lottery in the draft. Mm -hmm. Buffalo You got Josh Allen so you always got a chance. I'm not sold on the Jets. I'm, I think the Patriots are number four. The Dolphins are the, to me, are the odds-on favorite. Even with issues with Tua, I think they'll be better. Mm -hmm. um, big shout out to Anthony Weaver, New D DC. But the four-year reign of Buffalo as the AFC's champions is over. It seems like right. If I had to say right now, and I hate to say it because I. Well, that's the difference between Buffalo and Kansas City. Is Kansas City had all these issues and still found a way to win the division. They got rid of one of the one of the two or top two or three premier receivers in his prime, um, Tyreek Hill. And then, you know, and felt like they could, you know, and they did it and they won it the next year. But the thing is, I'm telling you this right now. They always had a young emerging defense under Spags. They always got better mm -hmm. as the season went on because he started to figure out his personnel. So he's always made chicken salad out of chicken. You know, you know what? And they didn't even have chicken. You, you, you know what? Because they drafted well defensively. That Buffalo was a maybe a little bit older defense. You, now you get a you get a uh, say a free agent pickup or really all pro type of player. You get Milano back, mm -hmm. but guess what? You lost you lost White. So even though you picked White in the first round, he got a contract. You never saw any return on your investment. Um, both the safeties are gone. Mm -hmm. um, now Micah Hyde might come back, but he's not the Micah Hyde before. You, you're you're depleted defensively. Mm -hmm. Term already kind of sketchy. You know, late. Yeah, you got L. Oliver, but you're, you're depleted defensively. You got Johnson. You got some good pieces, but you don't have what you had before because the safeties and up the middle is what made it, you know, successful. So they're in some trouble. But one man's loss, another man's gain. Down there in Houston, boy, they they a hype. Fire up them barbecue oh, yeah. smokers. Oh yeah, they get well, and they they like that. They they like a little bit drier uh, barbecue down there. Hmm. Okay, well, that's all right though. That's fine. Yeah, but people, they're eating right now. Mm -hmm. So, 
Yeah, man, it's, it's, it, look, it's ever-evolving. You just never would have thought it, um, let alone we didn't even get to touch, touch on, uh, you know, Rice, you know, turned himself in, Dallas PD or police department. Um, you know, Randy Gregory, big shout-out to him. He's down at Tampa, which I think is a great spot mm-hmm. for him. Jason Light, you know, he's a former Nebraska player. I was in Nebraska Westland, their GM. Devontae's um, still there. Yep, yeah, 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 which is great for him. You know, under his wing, they know each other. Mm-hmm. Keep, him, keep him on the straight and narrow, knows him, easy. Right when you talk about off-season moves, it's not just on the production. The really good GMs find the person and how to accentuate the situation for the person, more return on investment of the player, and that's why some teams continue to win even when they're not supposed to. Like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, mm. there's something that they saw in Baker Mayfield. Mm-hmm. That allowed him to be successful. Big shout out to Baker. Baker, you owe me some money, man. Last time <laughs> I saw you, first time I saw you, I told you it was going to go number one. You went number one, got paid. Okay, hadn't seen you since. You you you, you went on a downturn. You should be hooking up with me every season, right? Or every off season. I think his, his wife's from Lincoln, right? Nebraska ties, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right? she's from uh-huh. like Waverly or something somewhere, like that, right? Yeah. Somebody said they rolled up on a scene in Waverly. Mm-hmm. Look, man, holla at your boy. See you at the Super Bowl. You ain't hurt to find. Yeah. So you're at the Super Bowl. Every time you take a picture of me, you get cash checks, and I don't get nothing back, nothing in return. Like strict. That's a dang shame, man. Just taking, just taking all types of body shots today. Anyways, we're going to take a quick break. We'll get to your text there from the text line and on the stream. Jay Foreman, Austin Norman, old school. We'll be right back. Bagels and Joe is the perfect place for breakfast or lunch in April. Try their brand new cake batter cream cheese on any breakfast sandwich. And try the caramel latte as 10% of proceeds from that drink will go to the Foundation for Lincoln Public Schools. Four locations in Lincoln and one in Seward, Bagels and Joe. Spring is a time of new beginnings and trying new things. If you haven't tried Fear's Cheese Spread yet, the time is now. For parties for St. Patrick's Day and Easter or celebrating the NCAA tournament with friends, there's no better dip to bring everyone together and celebrate something from Nebraska. Get to your local grocery store today and load up on Fear's Cheese Spread. No event or party is complete without it on your table. Used to spotty shop or our customers send their friends. That's the greatest compliment we can receive. If you've been in an accident, we'll get you back in your vehicle as quickly as possible. Our technicians care about you and your family and repair your vehicle to factory standards. We handle your claim from start to finish and provide a free loaner car. Stop by for a free estimate. Used to spotty shop, just south of 88th and Highway 2. The most recommended used to spotty shop. That's who we are. Sandhills Global is hiring. With their fast-paced, growing culture, they have hundreds of new openings in sales, marketing, traveling support, software development, web design, and more. Full-time roles offer a four-and-a-half-day work week, along with flexible internships in most areas. Career and internship opportunities are available at our global headquarters in Lincoln, Nebraska. Find your fit today at www.sandhills.jobs. At Parkview Animal Hospital in Lincoln, it's not just the professional care that sets them apart, but their warm staff and state-of-the-art facilities. Whether it's for a routine checkup or a comprehensive medical procedure, at Parkview, your pet isn't just another number, but a valued member of their caring family. Visit them at pahlincoln.com today and in person just south of 14th and Pine Lake Road. Parkview Animal Hospital, your pet, our passion. For happier, healthier furry friends. Wall-to-Wall Wine and Spirits is now open in Lincoln. Shop our expansive collection of wine, beer, spirits, and cigars at 5040 North 27th Street. From top-shelf liquor to crowd-favorite beer, Wall-to-Wall Wine and Spirits has a beverage for every taste and every budget. Plus, join our loyalty program to earn rewards and save on future purchases. Shop Wall-to-Wall Wine and Spirits at 5040 North 27th Street in Lincoln. That's 5040 North 27th Street. Jake Sorensen here for The Body Shop. My wife is nearing her due date with our first child and has been in need of a good massage as her body continues to change and adapt. Dennis and the team at The Body Shop were incredible with the prenatal massage that she's still talking about today. I was also able to get a deep tissue massage, so it was a great bonding experience and a unique couple's massage in general. If you're in need of stress relief, book a massage today at thebodyshoplincoln.com, The Body Shop at 48th and A. 
At Southeast Community College, community is our middle name. Our continuing education classes offer personal interest, traffic safety and licensing, online learning, and adult education classes across Southeast Nebraska or online in your own home. Learn pottery or floral design. Take a computer course. Learn Spanish. How to start writing a book or Air Fryer 101. See the full schedule of continuing education classes online at southeast.edu slash continuing. SCC, your path to possible. If you're in Seward or Milford, listen up. Select Plumbing is now servicing your area with no trip charges from Lincoln. Select Plumbing works on a variety of issues for your home and business, including general plumbing, water heaters, faucet and fixture repair, underground sewer and water repairs, backflow testing, and more. Keep your property free from leaks and other issues. Call today for a free estimate, 402-560-6197. It's not just Lincoln, Waverly, and the surrounding area anymore. It's also Seward and Milford with no trip charges. Contact Select Plumbing to inquire at 402-560-6197. Get rid of pesky critters once and for all with Bats to Rats. Their expert team is here to help you reclaim your home. No more sleepless nights caused by crawling critters or flapping wings. Bats to Rats ensures a safe environment for every family member. Check the website at BatsToRats.com for amazing offers. And if you mention this ad, you'll receive $10 off your initial inspection cost. Call Bats to Rats today at 402-781-8691. That's 402-781-8691. Bats to Rats. Back to Old School with DP and J on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Jay Foreman, Austin Orman, Old School, getting uh, down to the first hour here. Um, Stefan Diggs to uh, Houston, Texas, Buffalo to Houston. Now, look, I did that. It worked out well. So hopefully he, uh, he does the same thing. Uh, he's, a, he's got the ability to take it to a whole, a whole other level than I did. Um, but you know what? I think it's great trade for Houston. Um, Buffalo, I don't know so much. I, Bean was up there saying that uh, – they're trying to win. Every move is to win. They're in the salary cap issues. Um, so you can't really say that. You know, you, you guys, you, you, it's not a total rebuild because you have a great quarterback. It's a reshuffling. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, the one thing that's been reshuffling, it seems at a, at a pace that people at Nebraska didn't expect, um, was the Nebraska basketball or men's basketball roster um, as far as the amount of players and also the timing has a little bit been a u- little unique. Um, some that were probably forecasted and assumed. Also, Rom- Romel Lloyd uh, Jr. You expected as soon as the season mm-hmm. was over. Um, then you had C.J. Wiltshire, which is understandable. Uh, Jamarcus Lawrence threw everybody for a shock, and then you had some other ones that was uh, added to it. So I think the grand total is about six, and that's you know you have Blaze Keita, who showed at times a very small. Um, stints to be able to rebound, be physical, could actually score with back to the basket a little bit, but very raw. Felt like, you know, if he would have stayed, you know, injury free, the development would have been there. You know, it's essentially half of your roster is gone. Eli Rice. Yeah, Eli there. Rice, mm-hmm. which is probably the biggest potential guy in there. But, you know, there's a lot of ground to be made up, on, whether it's a lack of experience or just getting better skill wise on both sides of the, or in both ends of the court. And then you see that boom, they're gone. So I think it's 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 definitely been, but I I mean I'm just gonna trust Fred that he has a plan. He's shown that he has a plan. He he's also shown that he's a he has ability to recruit all different types of players and they work out. He showed you the ability to go out and get an AAU squad. That didn't work out so much in, in the in the wins and losses, but he was able to put guys into the next level. Um, you're able to go get a guy and I won't say take a chance, but really know what Derek Walker is meant or built, to, you know, made of. He's a foundation piece and probably been a, it was, is somebody that's not going to get enough credit for this. You're seeing this, the, the fruits of the labor and the success this year based mm-hmm. on Derek Walker, his leadership, his toughness, and that point forward point center. So you got a lot of firepower coming back, but then you lose, you know, a lot. And then you lost a lot of guys that you may be, at least I thought we're going to come back to make Nebraska wouldn't say the odds on favor to win the big 10, but a team that's not going to be picked 10th again, 12th again. Mm-hmm. Now it's like starting all over. It's one thing to go back to the, go to the portal. In my opinion, Austin, I want yours to get two guys. 
Mm-hmm. You got to get four. At least. Because you got the two guys coming in. So, mm-hmm. you, you know, with Frager and uh, Janowski. Janowski. So you got to think you got to get at least four. Three and then maybe a late two. So, But you at least mm-hmm. got to get three, I call them hardheads, mm-hmm. and going to come in here and be hardheaded and do your thing. That's a lot of work to do because of the environment of college basketball. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to get three superstars. Right. You might have to find three superstars in their role. Yeah. Because I think the, the way that I've been framing this in, in my head and in some conversations is now Nebraska has to do everything possible to get Bryce Williams, Juwan Gary, and Rinkmast back. If you can keep 60% of your starting lineup, those are three pretty important guys. That's a good place to start. Now, again, we talked about it even with the transition from Derek Walker to Rinkmast. Yeah. Nebraska has to look similar and have the same kind of overall program identity but nebraska doesn't have to get to those same spots in the same way yeah right we saw the shift from walker to mast go pretty smoothly pretty swimmingly i would say so nebraska doesn't have to go get a one-for-one replacement for any of these guys they can be different guys with different skills but nebraska's identity can can remain the same the the biggest pain to me jay of those guys leaving eli rice and Romel lloyd especially maybe throw to marcus lawrence in that conversation is that now it feels like next year for Nebraska without the right kinds of additions or the right signs, Nebraska feels a little bit like the Rams going all in for that Super Bowl. Yes. Where that's the point exactly of what it is. having yeah. Rice and Lloyd and even Lawrence to some degree is you can rely on Bryce Williams, Juan Gary, and Rink Mass to make this run. Mm. Then when they leave, you should feel like you have that foundation built up. Other guys ready right. for that chance and that role to step in. Right. Whereas with those guys gone. Now you don't know. You don't know. None of them were a star right now, but they could have been. So keeping them in the program, getting their feet wet and legit, you know, 17, 20, 25 minutes per game next year, you see the flashes. Okay, these are the guys we wanted to build our program on. That's gone. So yes, Bryce, Jawan, Rink are the foundation to some degree, but I would argue the true foundation is in those recruiting classes and those younger guys developing year by year into those roles to take that mantle on themselves to not need to rely on the transfer. Yeah, I was talking, you're, you're hitting it right out, you're out of the park. And I know we're playing the Royals right now. So over they're hitting the, hitting out of the <laughs> park, but it, that's, that's 100% true. You got to start recruiting the people that want to be here for more than a year, more than a quick paycheck, uh, more than a lot of pats on the back because they have a tremendous opportunity if they could just wait nine months mm-hmm. and it's not waiting, sitting on the bench. It's actually learning on the job. And then here is the job. It's like an internship and you're getting paid and you're getting immensely compensated. Well, well last year's in the rearview mirror. If you're right. Demarcus Lawrence, you act like a starter now. Yeah. As soon as you step back on the ground in Lincoln from the flight back from Memphis, you're Eli it's my, Rice from Mel Boy Jr. It's my this team. is my yeah. spot. This is my job. You act like a starter then. Yeah. You don't have to wait. Yeah, the se- well, the season, you know, a lot of times, to be honest with you, um, I, and I'll just go, I'm just going off of, we talked about, me going in the spring ball and mm-hmm. you know how it changed from year to, you know, as a year to year, but as I changed, you know, my profile might've changed. I started to prepare for spring ball with four games left when I, in my red shirt year, mm-hmm. I literally started to train harder. That means, cause the reason why during the season, we still had a, a harder workload in the weight room than the guys that were playing but it still wasn't to the extent of what we would need in winter conditioning. Mm-hmm. So guess what I said? I said, listen, I'm going to go going out here practicing. So I'm already, you know, exp- you know, expending a lot of energy. Then I'm going to push myself even harder in the weight room. Give so me that winter conditioning work here early. Yeah. And now I'm two or three steps ahead of my mm-hmm. competition. So that's what they, I would, you would like to see. So now if you really don't, if you have to put a lot of effort into getting to know the player, the person, the family, the past coaches, the past teammates to find out what they're um, like about, because you need those guys to be in this program. So you're not rebuilding, you're reloading. Just like you said, they can do that. It'll be, you'll be good because also what we have to do as fans, and this is not, t- you know, lowering expectations is, have to be okay with a little bit of rocky waters as the, in the beginning of the season. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Non-conference is going to be huge. So if you're not seeing explosive games by rank mass and Williams, but you got to be able to pick and choose your spot, they got to be okay with it. Yeah. We want to save you until it's money time. We get in the conference. You guys, your, your minutes are going to go up, say by six minutes each. Well, you got to spread those out with the Jay Formans and Austin Ormans that are 
getting used to just going to PBA, still getting used to practice, still getting used to the expectations. What a game day's like. What a game day's like. Dealing mm -hmm. with expectations, cementing ourselves in this program, all the while playing in front of a sold-out arena in PBA and just coming off the of NCAA um, experience. So that'll be interesting. You know, you just hate those, hate to see those guys that leave and some guys you, you know that they could have really, really maximized their opportunity here. Uh, but you got to, you know, hang your hat on that Fred and company can really uh, make it work. So, um, look, they're highly compensated and highly thought of in the athletic program and what they've done in their career. So they got to go ahead and do it again. And the way, to be honest with you, Austin, we fast forward to 2025, we're probably having the same conversation. So <laughs> <laughs> it, onward and upward. So uh, anyways, we're going to take a break, come back at the top of the uh, five o'clock hour. We are going to talk about the NCAA men's basketball transfer portal. We are going to. I'm going to ask Austin about my man, AJ store. Mm. Is he a good gambler or was he eat? What did they say? You never bet with your heart. Yep. Right. He might've put his heart out there a little bit too far. Jay Foreman, Austin Orman, old school. We'll be right back. If the week's been too hectic to even think about dinner or your family can't handle one more night of leftovers, then it's time to let Hog Wild do the cooking. Hog Wild's family packs are one heck of a good deal for a complete barbecue meal loaded with all the smoked meats, tasty sides, buns, and sauces you need to feed your family. Order online at GoHogWild.com. Hog Wild Pit Barbecue, 3210 Cornhusker Highway in Lincoln. But don't be late, we close at 8. Whether you're looking for a place to stay for a concert at PBA, a Nebraska home game, or just a night on the town, the Courtyard Lincoln Downtown Haymarket is the place for you. Enjoy an evening at one of many restaurants or bars within a short walking distance. Business travelers at the hotel will enjoy free high-speed internet access, a 24-hour business center, and large in-room workstations. And check out the Bistro, where you'll enjoy healthier food and beverage options, as well as high-tech conveniences. Book your room today at the Courtyard Lincoln Downtown Haymarket. This is James Harrell with NP Dodge Real Estate. When I became a licensed realtor, I wanted a brokerage that would help me grow in my new career. I found that in Lincoln First Realty. When Lincoln First was acquired by NP Dodge, the training and support I received only got better. I love knowing I have the power of the NP Dodge brand behind me. I would recommend NP Dodge to new agents looking to jumpstart their real estate career and to current agents who want to take their business to the next level. Expand your career with NP Dodge. Call Eric at 402-434-2222. Grab a free burger and beer at LA Power Sports of Lincoln on April 27th during their Husker Spring Game Tailgate. Meet the LA Power Sports team, play some tailgate games with them, and enter for a chance to win an official John Elway autographed football. Check out their huge selection of boats and watercraft for the summer, along with hundreds of motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-sides from all the major brands. Stop out and watch the game with them on April 27th. LA Power Sports of Lincoln, 27th and I-80. They'll be tailgating all day. At Fairway Meat Market, your family, and as part of the family, they want to save you money on your meat and groceries. Now, through April 7th, enjoy USDA Choice 8-ounce New York strips for $6.99 each, hickory smoked bacon for $4.99 per pound, fresh boneless skinless chicken breast for $2.99 per pound, and whole tri-tip for $9.99 per pound. That's all at Fairway Meat Market in the Rockledge Square Shopping Center, just south of 84th and Van Dorn. Rico here with HIS Auto Care at 70th and Van Dorn, letting you know HIS is a great place to bring your vehicle for service. With superior service, bumper to bumper, we'll treat your vehicle like it's your mother's. Doesn't get any better than that. So call 402-488-8934 and HIS Auto will make you glad you did. 5% off, mention this ad, and for sure your mother be proud you called. 402-488-8934, HIS Auto Care, 70th and Van Dorn. God bless you. Spring is here. It's time to get back outside and into proper shoes this year. Brown Shoe Fit is the place to buy this spring with their sale on athletic shoes. Get $15 off any regular price athletic shoes with respected brands like Hoka, Brooks, New Balance, and On Running. And don't forget, Brown's carries a large arrangement of sizes and widths to fit your feet properly. Start your spring off right at Brown Shoe Fit, just south of 66 and Q in Lincoln. 
Empower a child today with the Teammates Mentoring Program. Hope is only a conversation away when you choose to share your talent, time, and heart with a child. Together, you can build a relationship based on strengths and chart a brighter future one week at a time. Find out how you can be a mentor by visiting LincolnTeammates.org. Become what you needed as a kid by joining the Teammates Mentoring Program today. Constructors is now hiring for all positions, with laborers starting at $23 and up based on experience. Constructors has immediate job openings for laborers, mechanics, bridge builders, operators, and drivers. Start your new career today. Constructors offers great pay, health, dental, and vision insurance, paid time off, paid holidays, and so much more. Join the crew today and be a part of Nebraska's oldest paving company dating back to 1908. For a complete list of openings and to apply online, visit ConstructorsLincoln.com. John Henry's has a brand new membership club to protect your entire home in one program. With a VIP and a deluxe option, we will help you find the plan that best fits your needs. Receive discounts on services and equipment, priority service, complimentary inspections, and so much more. Protect your home's plumbing, heating, cooling, and electrical systems all in one membership. Call John Henry's to learn more. 435-5555, John Henry's Plumbing, heating and air. Coming at you live from the heart of Lincoln, America, this is Old School. Sponsored by the Mercado by Certified Piedmontese. Broadcasting veteran Derek Pearson. When you find something that moves them, that makes them smile, celebrate it. That's your task. That's your superpower. Nebraska Football Hall of Famer Jay Foreman. Rifles a pass. It was tipped. It's picked off by Foreman. He's at the 15. Grand five. He'll score. On 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. What up? We're back. Jay Foreman, Austin Orman, old school. We're live in effect at 1040 O Street. Uh, beautiful day out here. We were getting blown away this morning. It was like 45 mile an hour gust, and now it's none, no wind. So uh, people should be happy if you go uh, to the Mercado and go to the butcher shop, two locations, 84th and Havelock, 13 Yankee Hill. You might be able to get a quick little grill session in and, uh, you know, start your night off right because you don't want to be like, if you guys ever see Terrell Farley out there, you see him out there and you see him running around. And for people that are on uh, Call of Duty, he's on there. He thinks he's, he's actually pretty good at Call of Duty. Um, my, he can't grill at all. Cannot. He says he can, but he can't. Mm. I, I feel like every every man thinks they can grill. Mm -hmm. But if you have to say you can grill, you can't, you grill. can't grill. Yeah. Everyone yeah. else tells you you can grill. I always, said, I always ask people if you make your own barbecue sauce. Mm. and i i've I, I haven't perfected mine it's a, it's a family recipe it started from my grandfather he got it from his father so my great great grandfather um my grandfather took it from his father and did it when they were when he was serving in the army and they would somehow you know i don't know if they was eating a, you know they thought they were barbecuing probably make it Probably really making chicken salad taste <laughs> or chicken, <laughs> right. you know what, yeah. taste, taste like chicken salad out there. Um, and some pretty lean times. And then my dad does it better than anybody. Mm. He still won't give it up, but uh, you know, I've 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 tried to jog my memory of it, but nevertheless, um a lot of stuff going on with the transfer port. I just think it's it's one of those things that <clears throat> the my question to you, Austin, is is we all knew I think this is a byproduct, you're you're getting this type of magnitude is because you went so long and so many, not just years, decades of not taking care of the players it essentially was just making billions of dollars <laughs> off of players and free labor. I don't care what you say. Yeah. That's the way it is or way it was. Mm -hmm. Now you're seeing it like this is a wild, wild west. I want to ask you, do you ever think it's going to like slow down as far as the NIL and these crazy payments that these players are getting at such a young age that they realistically haven't earned yet? It will slow down at some point, but only because it won't be the same system. Yes. You know, I yeah. think that's why it's going to slow down is that it might take a decade to eventually there will be a system in place. It won't be Ooh. the perfect system, but there will be something in place that's at least a good start. So we'll stop having the the NIL pay for play, pay for transfer conversation. Mm. And we'll just have a different conversation. The money's not going to stop flowing right. yeah. ever. Think, it's just going to get to the, the student athletes in different ways. I think for the people that are donating money to these funds or whatever, I think things will dr drastically change. 
and it might get lower when you uh i think football players in particular are going to become some sort of union or employees um the only caveat is what what will school look like mm, right <laughs> you know what i mean um will there be school will there be school uh it, it, but i do think that's going to happen i think what i think if they could get to a salary cap that you could meet and mm -hmm. it's your choice and you have to go out there and market your team and raise money then you will be able to meet that cap and then you will have a fully funded team if not then you will have scholarship players so forth and so on i think that's the only way it's going to change I do think it's going to slow down because I think it was the cool thing to do. It was the thing that you thought you had to do to support your program. But then I think as you're starting to see some players haven't lived, don't live up to their billing or mm -hmm. whatever the fake, whatever fake or real numbers or something in between, whatever they're getting, you're not seeing it. You're like, oh, that's, that's, we, we got duped. You're starting to see more of that. So then that's where you're going to get people not more or less apt to give, give money. Uh, you're definitely onto something there. I would want your opinion on this question. Is a salary cap more necessary or a salary floor? Because I think if there's no salary floor, enough schools would try to just pocket that money for themselves. You say, mm -hmm. oh, we can only yeah. spend up to this amount, but we can spend anything less than that. I mean, yeah. that's where you see like the Oakland Athletics yeah, yeah, spending yeah, no yeah, money, yeah. but there's no competition. Money ball. Yeah, yeah, I think. I think you need to, you know, I, that's my, that's what I view as a salary cap. I think, but I also think like if you always operate at the floor, that's what your program will be. Right. And I think once you get a cap and if it's the big 10 and sec going off and doing their thing, or they're one big conference and everybody else is forming, whatever the landscape looks like, there will be some way to win your way up and lose your way out and what that will do will constantly put pressure on you to not operate at the floor mm. and that floor will be predicated on who's the coach and how you go about it i think they will start to tie wins and losses to escalators and, and de-escalators in your contract so i think the whole thing is going to it change and it's not going to be anytime soon um i think it in, in maybe four or five years maybe six um and they, they're probably looking at all different types of like modules and models and all that i'm sure they got mm -hmm. ai in it or who knows you know <laughs> what i mean no. yeah i mean who knows what who would they're you rather doing have run it ai or ncaa yeah well, that's, you know what that's <laughs> i always say what, what what type of diarrhea do you like you like <laughs> right. the, like the slow oozy one where it hurts your stomach or you like the explosive one knocks you out is <laughs> that's where you're at it, there's nothing good gonna come out of it so it's just interesting and now we we pivot to i'm just looking on um cbs 24 7 sports and they have um, essentially your top 50 players um, in the transfer portal. And before we get to the top 50, I want to talk about one story in particular. And we know who this is, AJ Store, right? So AJ Store was a, he's a, a wing that means a two, three, small four for uh, Wisconsin. He averaged, you know, 17 points. Uh, multi-level score that means an inside out inside or outside he could drive and a pretty good defender um and improved his three-point shot as the season went on he got to wisconsin because our boy rick patino blew up their whole roster <laughs> he was a all-conference freshman he was a pretty good, pretty player, good player as a freshman mm -hmm. the story goes he goes to kansas the university of kansas Consistently win the Big Ten, always going to probably be a number one or two seed in there in the in the NCAA tournament. Rock hey, Jack Jayhawk. Rock, That's right, cool. yeah. And consistently get guys drafted in the lottery. He goes down there for whoever he talked to, said, I need a million. A million what, AJ? A million ducats. Like, what is it? <laughs> a million dollars. <laughs> I want a million dollars next year. Essentially, I'm playing one more year than I'm heading to the NBA. A million. Kansas say, you know what? We like you. We we're not so infatuated head over heels because we don't have to, because we're not operating out of desperation. We're Kansas, you know that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know you you probably went to Kansas City or we flew you right in there. We probably did private jet and all that. We'll give you seven hundred and fifty, take it or leave it. We were going to give you five, but we'd like you. So seven fifty. Yeah, yeah, we started at five, but then you know Bill Self said, "Listen, man, my man can score. He's a next level player." 
He'll, he's worth that extra quarter quarter of a quarter. million dollars. <laughs> Not quarter pound, quarter mil. For like six months worth of work. Mm -hmm. Maybe nine if you really it, get to it, go. Yeah, nine if you decide to move early, right? Because mm -hmm. that means if you're doing the whole offseason and all that, and you'll probably play on like a junior Olympic team or something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He ain't really in. You ain't in Lawrence. <laughs> so he says, nah, you know what, man? I appreciate the offer for 750000 but I'm out of here. I'm gone. Sight just left. Because Candace <laughs> said, take this. This is our last offer. So that means they, they that lets me know that they started at five and then incrementary or incre increments, they went up to 750. Mm -hmm. Then they just got tired. 750, take it or leave it. We got to compromise. We got to get some other guy. Then I'm out. My man walked away from a smooth $750,000. Essentially, he would be, if he, did, if he was there for six months, because, okay, let's just say, okay, so... Say Wisconsin goes until June, right? College, mm -hmm. May. Yeah. You probably won't get to Kansas to July, correct? Fair. So let's go. Okay, let's go July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. And two weeks of April. Two weeks of April and you declare. That's nine months. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be making a little bit less than $100,000 a month and you only playing like 30 games. Because mm -hmm. I'm not even counting when you first get there. No. And you just said, I'm out? Where else you going? Crystal Ball says Illinois, but Illinois is not giving a mill. AJ Store is not. Listen, I know. The, I, million I, listen, 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 listen. I know they're AD. He ain't giving. They, you ain't getting no million. No. Whitman's not giving that. No. <laughs> he didn't even buy. He wouldn't even take me out to the uh, to, uh, Outback. He's he making me pay for it. I was like, man, nah. listen, yeah. Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. He told me not to get no barbecue sauce on chicken in the barbie. <laughs> no, nah, that's my dude. But it's, <laughs> Does he make it, his own barbecue sauce? Nick, he yeah. does not know. He does He does not season his meat. Now he does, but he didn't. He was definitely. My man was Good built. Good work, Jay. You worked on it. He, he, but he was built. Like, <laughs> he was RoboCop. That's how I looked at it, man. He looked like the man of steel. You know what I mean? Um. So... That that just amazed me when he did it because you got to think, Kansas just <laughs> upped their offer. This is after the guys they they just got Zeke Mayo. Mm -hmm. For you don't know, guys don't know who Zeke Mayo is. South Dakota State Summit Player of the Year, average nineteen point six. The same type of player, thirty nine percent three point shooter. Mm -hmm. Better in store. Better than store. Mm -hmm. That's your guy. And you like, and they're gonna they were gonna overpay for you because I know they ain't give Zeke Mayo that. Zeke Mayo was like, man, I'm here for four. They were kind of trying to get two for one. They probably mm -hmm. was trying to make sure you say, don't tell my boy, don't tell your boy what we paid because we gave you three <laughs> times. He said, I'm out of here. Okay, who, who, who is it a worst look for? AJ Store demanding a million dollars or Kansas coming off a disappointing year not being willing to pay? AJ Store, Kansas is always going to be a factor. You can't win it every year. Sure, and Kansas has the excuse of. McCullers or McCullers was was hurt. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. So, you know, it's really interesting because the number one guy is John L. Davis. If you guys remember when Florida Atlantic really, they have they have uh, three of the top ten guys in there. He was the star of the 2003 Final Four, 18, 19 points, a six four combo guard. Um, he's he's also testing the NBA. You know, they're probably going to go through the pre draft stuff. He's the number one ranked guy. Tucker DeFry DeVries is the next. He's going from Drake to West Virginia. His dad took dad. the job from Drake. That's a, But he's number two. So that, if you watch in the NCAA tournament, he can ball, right? Mm -hmm. And then you had Zeke Mayo. He's number three. He's going to Kansas. Number four was Thor. Number five is uh, Vladsav, Vladsav Golden, the big man. And this is I'm what I say you. from Russian, mm -hmm. from the big Russian. Mm -hmm. When they went to the final four, he was the guy that you saw the potential, but he was the he was very inexperienced. So the improvement that he got from that final fourth of this year, he went from just the, you know, the fourth option, right? Because they had the three guards. He was actually the fifth option, right? 16.7 boards, two blocks a game. 63% 60, 60, shooting from the field. That's the guy you want. Rim the rim runner, improved mm -hmm. his range, shot blocking ability, defense ability. You talk about Brooke Lopez, mm. but a little bit more physicality and athletic ability. Just for NBA comparison, he's number five. Uh, then you got my man, the big man in the middle, that the six eleven center from um, Rutgers that just beat us up. He was just dunking left and right. Uh, Clifford uh, Amore, who's what, 
there was a little bit of Nebraska crystal ball there, but that that would be great as well. Then you got Javon uh, Porter that went to Pepperdine, six eleven, um, younger brother Michael Porter Jr. In much le- much less gambling trouble than Jonte Porter. Yes, so. that, listen, that's a good, listen. Whoever his dad is, the dad is Michael Porter. You are doing a work? And, <laughs> well done. Congratulations. <laughs> three <laughs> yeah. for three. Yes, you are six nine, <laughs> six nine, six eleven, and he's number seven. Then you got Kevin Miller, right? Which is odd because he's leaving Wake Forest. He's the second option to um, Hunter Salas. Right. Mm-hmm. Six foot guard. You know, when you think about what you want a point guard of that, right? 37% from three, 85% from free throw. You want a guy that can close and bust your head open to the white meat. Eight, number eight. There's tons of guys in it. Tony Perkins from Iowa. Aaron, U- Aaron Ulis needs to make the Tony Perkins leap. I was just about to say that. I would. I think Tony Perkins is the better player right now, but Tony Perkins also made a jump. Yeah. If Aaron Ulis makes a similar jump, now the S average the same numbers, but if he can take that level of a leap, okay, fine. There's your starting point guard. Yes. Yes. Because the part of the reason why he was, he, Ulis was available was because Iowa thought that he was going to make the jump. Yeah. Right now, we obviously there was some other stuff that was standing, <laughs> but on the basketball court, made the jump over the river once you made Yeah, yeah, and you you fell in the middle through the two minutes. Like you weren't very good, but it, all jokes aside, so he can do it, and you have somebody that you know that you can actually still look. Even though he left Iowa and Nebraska, they're still friends. Mm-hmm. You can call him and ask him. He's in the portal as well. Uh, we talked about Michi Johnson, the leading scorer from South Carolina. He's going to Ohio State. Back to Ohio. State. Yeah, back to Ohio State, which is that lets you know that. That had to be something to do with the coach, right? And so mm-hmm. you're a previous coach. Um, now, Austin, I want to ask you about this. I don't know where he's at. We're still going down the list. But the bigger news that broke last night after my man, Le- Strick, I hope you listen, after LeBron did his thing, was Bronny James going into the portal. Now, granted, you lose your coach, who was a great recruiter. He goes to SMU. We're going to d- dive into that a little bit of why he said he left USC. It wasn't for money. It wasn't for facilities. It was in particular that SMU is now in the ACC. Mm. But what do you think uh, Bronny James does? He already had been on a trip to Ohio State that quick. So mm-hmm. he had been in the portal before it broke, right? That, yeah. Right? So Assumedly. what do you – and he showed flashes, right? I mean, obviously, you're listen, I know what it's like. I do know what it's like uh, being when I played running back and always being compared to an all-time great. And so there is some similarities there. I know what it's like. You got to carve your own path. Um, I think obviously Bronny is a different player than LeBron. I mean, look, he's six four, um, very smart, better shooter at that age. I mm-hmm. think than LeBron, bet, more explosive than people give him credit for. Really good defender. What do you think his next move is, and what do you think his best move is? Because being LeBron James's son and Bronny James is always going to be there. And you know, he's comfortable in his skin too. Mm-hmm. So LeBron and, and and his family and his they've done a really good job of letting him grow up and be a young man. That's why you see him so comfortable. But basketball wise, where do you think he's going to end up or where where's a spot do you think he should try to go to maximize his game? Specific schools, I don't have a lot in mind, but this is where I think LeBron's professional experience and being in touch with as many NBA GMs and evaluators as as he is absolutely has to come into play because I can understand Bronny wanting to go maximize what he's able to do in college. He can probably be an NBA role guy, but he's got more to prove at the college level. If he wants to put up numbers, dominate the ball, um, not like... Amani Bates style. I don't think he ever takes that many shots. Yeah. But I, I could see him going to a mid major. I mean, Duquesne comes to mind because LeBron's friend just took over as head yeah. coach with Dan yeah. brought yeah. out. Um, A10 is a good enough level, but not oh, yeah. overpowering. He could run the point and have the ball in his hand, create his own shots. True. Quadruple his minutes. Right. Yeah. So if you want to prove that you can do that and see if you can take a leap, I think you go to a place like Duquesne. If you want to follow the template that I think he's going to be as an NBA player three and D two guard for the most part. I would try to stay high major and find a coach that's going to work me on defense and get me spot up jumpers. Can Bronny turn into Deandre Hunter? He could. What about um, that? Yeah, he could. I think he could be, you know, one of, I, I think he can get to the rack better than what people give him credit for. Cause I think he's very crafty. Sure. I mean, he's listen, he's been trained. He's been in, he's the, the, this, he's been 
in this arena of NBA lifestyle and what it takes to what work really is, mm-hmm. is long before the guys that are playing. And here's where he'll, here's where he will make up so much ground against guys that are maybe taller, maybe more athletic or more potential is the ability to work mm. and what work looks like, mm-hmm. what sacrifice looks like. So I think he could be that. I'm trying to just trying to think like he could be maybe McDaniel's from my Timberwolves, right? Okay. On, on yep. the on the now he's not mm-hmm. six seven, right? He's six four. He has some length in his arms. But he's he's sturdy enough to be physical, right? He's Drew big. Holiday, right? I'm think that's just the second guy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, probably not as grimy yet on defense, but can be that, right? Mm-hmm. And where he's a tempo setter on defense, he's waiting for you at half court. He's big enough to handle the big two guards and can guard a six six guy because he knows how to play D. Mm-hmm. He's quick enough to guard on the point, um, and then also he can put enough pressure on you offensively that. He can not only hit the three, he can hit the transition three, and then he can get to the, you know, the 18 footer pull up. That's what I think he could be. It's an interesting decision because there's two ways I think he could do it. He could go to like either Ohio State or something, like you said, big, big, you know, major. Um, or you could go mid major like A10 and go to, you know, Duquesne and really take over and and be well, like, like I wouldn't say protected, but he's in good hands. Yeah. Because of the family ties there, plus LeBron James's old high school coach who just retired still will be around. Yeah. So you're getting like the LeBron James template at Duquesne that LeBron got at St. Mary's mm-hmm. and you're off the beaten path. And so you're like Amani Bates. Yeah. Not, not, not mm-hmm. the same type. Not the same type of player, but same what is kind it? of path. You go from mm-hmm. Memphis. The Eastern Michigan off it's the beat. It's a freaking Lanny. Right. It, it, look, off the beaten path, put up major numbers, putting in work in the G League, really, really killed it in, in the NBA Summer League. Mm-hmm. He will be on an NBA roster because his skills have grown immensely. Mm-hmm. And you're able to kind of grow at a at a rap, more rapid pace. Because what, what LeBron, what you're talking about, 3 and D, he can do that anyway. He can do that right now. He could get he could go up and, and play three and D in the NBA right now because he's smart enough, he's he's strong enough, and he he that's just what he does. You know, I mean mm-hmm. that's just kind of doesn't matter if he's at Duquesne, Ohio State, Nebraska, he's gonna be able to do that. Um what he really needs to really get, you know, more of obviously health withstanding is the playing time, the reps, the shots, the experience of running the show being on the ball off the ball leader make up for the time that from when he you know had the uh unfortunate health issue when he was at usc right and that's where i i go back to is there more in Bronny james than we've seen because i think nba evaluators would like to see some more on the ball juice to those opportunities right, to create right. and get to the rim right but also that's high risk high reward what if he proves he doesn't have it you know, obviously he's not going to be scared of that, but I think there'd be some evaluators who said, really, that's the choice he made. Yeah, you can't do it we, at Duquesne. Right. Yeah. We know what kind of player he was. Why, why didn't he take, you know, maybe dad's advice or why didn't he try to fit the NBA mold? So I think the the safer option is work some of those skills behind the scenes in the off season, yeah. be that three and D guy at a high major where you'll get late first round buzz, early second round buzz, but the GMs that watch will say, that's a really solid player. Yeah. If he's on the board, we will not feel bad about it, taking a guy like him. Low but risk, if he, yeah. low risk player. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's kind of like the equivalent of drafting a guy from Michigan. You know, mm-hmm. he's got championship quality, the DNA, as they like to call it. Another guy, uh, Austin, I want to ask you about before we go to break is Kerr Christop. Mm-hmm. You remember, it came down to Nebraska and West Virginia. He was the starting point guard at the University of Arizona Wildcats. Went into the portal last year. Chose West Virginia. Made the wrong choice. <laughs> He's in the portal again. Do you think it's somebody that they might want to go back? They Listen, it came down to Nebraska and West Virginia. I was surprised he went to West Virginia. Um, I just felt like what Nebraska needed, what he was able to do. I don't know if it was an NIL thing. I don't know what it was, but I just felt like it was a great fit for him. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's the possibility that Nebraska goes and gets him and see if 
you know, where, where he's at if he wants to try to go and, and make, you know, make it, you know, a better choice this time. Possibility, absolutely. I, I at least ask, say, hey, yeah. we're still interested to some degree. I did not like the idea of Kirk Risa last year because having a backcourt of him and Kese together, yeah, he, he's not a great defender. Having yeah. two of those guys on the court at the same time, not exactly what I was going for. But with Kese gone, their shots available. He's a 38, 39% three-point shooter who's run the point before. Maybe you have a whole point guard. Maybe you don't. We just got done talking about Aaron Euless. But if he's at the two, that's fine. I, I see Kirk Risa and Joe Girard, uh, who started at Syracuse and then went to Clemson. Yeah. It's very yeah. similar yeah. types of guys. Yeah. So I think there's a there would be a spot for for Kirk Risa um on this roster more so than than last year's. Yeah, you know, I mean it's 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 I'm thinking more of the offensive flair. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. To kind of pick and roll let, with him and Ray. Yeah, listen, you you shoot forty three percent from three. It, it gets you in a lot of places mm -hmm. um, because you're a pretty consistent three. And I was also, I mentioned Riley Kugel uh, from Florida that's at Kansas. You know, he's a six, five, you know, uh, wing um, that had a really good freshman year, a little bit of a downturn in sophomore year. That's because the talent around him got better. A um, little bit of dip in his three point shooting um, and is looking to go to Kansas and do what we mentioned about LeBron. Let's go, let's go to, to a big power five again or a major and show that we're still the three and D player, but I'm going to get better at my weaknesses mm -hmm. and more of a controlled environment, right? And you're, proved against better competition. better competition, but you're going to get better shots, easier shots, mm. um, which is really good. And where's the last one I want to talk about before we go to break is Frankie Fiddler. Mm. I remember seeing him at Bellevue West, and I always wondered why Nebraska wouldn't just throw the line in the water against him. He comes one, he comes from a winning program. Two, he showed you the ability to score. Number three, he had consistent improvement in his quickness to be a two and three in a small four defender. And he can do one thing that's so imperative to all, like in the transfer, he can score. And he scored in different ways. And he's done it as a freshman. He done it as a sophomore. And he's really made that huge leap to where he's improved his three-point shot. You, you always read about him, 30 points, scored. You know, he had a big, big game after big game. That's a guy that might fit a need for Nebraska where you think of, okay, he's not coming here to be like a one and done. Mm -hmm. He's a guy that's going to make a transition from UNO. You know him. Um, I know he's been the game, seeing some other people. I know you. So you know him. Um, I'm sure you kept an eye on him. You can't miss You can't <laughs> miss what he's doing right off the road. But then also he can go in there and play opposite on the court than Williams. But then once Williams leaves after next year, you're hoping he takes that same big leap like he did UNO. And I think he would be open to playing back here in Nebraska. It's going to be interesting to see if the, how far that goes or how much they, how much uh, they can make some inroads with him because I think he would be a sneaky good player. If you tell me Frankie Fiddler ends up at Nebraska next season, I'm not mad about it. I would hope that Nebraska is able to use him off the bench. I think yes. he's a fringe starter. I, I'm not. I'm not fully sold. He's made strides. He's obviously a good yeah. player. I think in Nebraska needs another wing. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think Juwan Gary, win. yes, yeah. and Bryce Williams can be your only two, you know, wing sized players. So I, I like the size, I like the shot creation, the shot making abilities. Like you're saying, it's all there. Athletically, he's improved. I'm just not fully sold. And, and again, he's stepping up a level. We've seen yeah. Nebraska have success with Summit level transfers before. So yeah, no, I, I'm not mad in the slightest if Frankie Fiddler ends up here. Uh, my gut just told me he'd be a little stretched as a, a full-time power five, power six starter. Yeah. So if you tell me he's the first guy off the bench, he's a matchup nightmare for some of these teams off the bench. See, I think like with him, just his career path always, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, it, everybody tries to do the, the initial, like walk, I call it the walk by test, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you know, big, tall, gangly looking white kid, you know, probably think he can't play. Listen, I think with Frankie Fiddler, listen, he can play, and he's gotten bigger, faster, quicker, and stronger. I think by the end of the season, if you stair step him, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Not what I mean is don't say here, thirty two minutes. Mm -hmm. Stair step him, you'd be like, okay, this, this dude, I can, he's going to be for real next year mm -hmm. because I think he has a mind for the game. Um, that helps him score. He can score from a variety of places on the court. He can score with different angles. He's added the post-up game. 
and he's added he's added depth in his three. Mm-hmm. So then everything in between, your smarts, your uh, you know like let's call it guile, you know the the things that you're able to figure it out that allow you to get to the free throw line. That's where his scoring comes from, mm. and you know he can hit big shots. So it'd be interesting to see what they do. Uh, anyways, you know there's plenty of options out there, but uh, you know you got six new six or six guys gone. You got to kind of replace those at stair step. You got to get some big. Uh, not big splashes, but make some make some noise because you want to get the fans still operating in a positive uh, uh, manner. So, anyways, we're gonna take a quick break. Jay Foreman, Austin Orman, old school. We'll be right back. Working at Continental in Lincoln isn't a job; it's a career. And right now, they've raised wages again, and they're hiring for production operators at twenty four sixty two per hour, which grows to twenty eight ninety seven per hour within three years. Skilled trade positions now start at thirty three thirty six per hour, with opportunities to make more based on certifications. Continental also has salary jobs available and great benefits, plus medical and prescription costs at very low premiums. Dental, vision, and life insurance are offered at no premium cost to the associates with increased bonuses and vacation for new hires. To learn more or apply, go to continentaljobs.com with keyword Lincoln. Come work at Continental today. Thank you should feel personal, not intimidating. At Western National Bank, we're about real connections, founded by two ordinary guys with an extraordinary vision to know each and every customer personally. Fees, they suck. Avoid all fees with Western National Bank's Compass Checking Account. No monthly fees, no minimum balances, and get this, 5.12 APY on the first $1,000. Open your Compass Checking Account online in five minutes or less at mywnb.com. Experience the difference with Western National Bank. Visit mywnb.com. Member FDIC. Looking for a job that feels like family? Join Lincoln Industries, where tradition meets innovation. They're a family-owned, privately held manufacturing company with a passion for excellence and a commitment to their community. They have openings on all shifts at both the main plant and air park facilities, offering flexibility to fit your schedule. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting out, there's a place for you there. At Lincoln Industries, they invest in their people's success, providing opportunities for growth and advancement. Apply now and become a part of something special at Lincoln Industries. Power Combo BOGO? Huh? Yes. If you purchase an air conditioner, you receive a furnace completely free. At John Henry's, our professionals want to ensure you are comfortable in your home all year long, no matter what Nebraska has to throw at us. Call today to schedule your free estimate and learn more about the free furnace waiting for you. Give John Henry's a call today. 435-5555. John Henry's plumbing. Heating and air. Perch Merch is your one-stop shop for all your printing and promotional needs in Lincoln, Nebraska. They specialize in screen printing, embroidery, vehicle wraps, window wraps, print collateral, promotional products, and signage. At Perch Merch, they are committed to delivering high-quality products and exceptional customer service. Their experienced team of design and printing professionals will work with you every step of the way to ensure that your vision is realized. Call for a quote today at 402-217-5212 or go to perch-merch.com. Ever wish you had another light switch on the other side of the room on a dark night? How much better would you sleep at night if you had a ceiling fan in your room? The High Electric Service Department is here to make your electrical what-ifs a reality. Whether you're looking to replace some outdated light fixtures or brighten up your counters with under-cabinet lighting, High Electric can handle all types of residential electrical installations and services. Give Erica a call at 402-466-6606 or visit high-electric.com to get started. Hey, Husker Nation. Matt Davison here with 1890. It's an exciting time to be a Husker fan, and to keep that momentum going, we need your help. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics, and we're doing the same through name, image, and likeness. NIL is a unique opportunity for every Husker fan to have a direct impact on the success of our programs. Through 1890, 100% of your contribution goes to the student athletes. So go to 1890nebraska.com, choose your sport, become a member, and help the Huskers recruit and retain the best. Go Big Red. Hi everyone, Kendall Warnock, A1 Automotive in downtown Lincoln. Spring is here, summer is fast approaching. With weddings, vacations, and weekend getaways on your mind, do not let car issues prevent you from getting where you need to be. Car problems shouldn't be something that you put up with. Let us get you back on the road in comfort and safety. We diagnose all makes and models from Porsches to Hondas, Toyotas, and Chevrolets. We fix a variety of issues with all of them with our talented techs and our experienced staff. A1 Automotive at 11th and L, downtown Lincoln, always honest answers. 
Plains Cover Crop is your one-stop seed shop. Call us now for spring and summer forages, CRP mixes, and fall cover crop blends. We do farm-specific consulting for practical and efficient seed blends to fit your geography and goals. With a very diverse inventory, we will tailor a blend just for you. We're also looking for contract growers, and we buy and sell rye. Find us online at plainscovercrop.com. Timeless agronomy practices paired with modern technology. East Highway 20 in Orchard and across Nebraska. Your home is your empire. Protect it with Empire Fence. Get a free instant quote with the online estimating tool at empire-fence.com. See an upfront estimate with no hidden fees. An Empire Fence can provide privacy and improve the appearance of your home. Keep kids and pets in or out of your yard. Increase security and add value to your property. Visit empire-fence.com now to view the stylish and maintenance-free possibilities for your home and get a free instant online quote. Let Empire Fence protect your empire. Back to Old School with DP and J on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. What up? We're back. Jay Foreman. DP is in the building all the way back from San Diego, fresh off the plane and the drive back to uh, Lincoln. How was the trip, my man? Uh, it's San Diego. So yeah, you can't complain. That part is good. That part is good. Then there's always the game. And uh, Jay, you'll probably get this. Uh, Austin, you'll probably get this, that uh, when you're used to playing – at Memorial Stadium and playing at a high level, and then you go to a place where there's nobody there <laughs> on a on a Tuesday night. That that that'd be the equivalent of going back when we used to play at Baylor. Yeah, you're you have to provide your own juice. Yeah, and uh, they got out. Supernovas got out early. It's like thirteen five, and Jay, I could see them looking around the arena instead of I'm like no, kill them. Yeah, like kill them now. Like finish them. That's how they get you. They get you out there and it's bored, bore you to death. Oh, you're out there, nice weather. Oh, like near the ocean and the waves crashing. Yeah, you're, you know you're you have to have a sleep. Yeah, you're you're at the pool. Yeah, you're at the pool. Like all oh, this is this is what we're doing. All right, it, 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 <laughs> in a, in a, in a happy hour yet? <laughs> yeah, and all of your family wants to be there, right? Yeah. So you've got you get distracted. You've, yeah, you got the full distraction, and you know, of course, I mean, these teams are really good. Yeah. There's no, there, there's really no, good. it's not over until it's over. We, 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 I asked Coach Bird that when she came in, and, um, you know, you, there's no time to relax. She was on fire, bro. Jay, sure. it, she don't oh. like to lose. <laughs> I mean, she lost she, the argument with me and LeBron and <laughs> the, me and LeBron and Jordan. Now she just took another L. I'm, I'm gonna stay, she was on fire. I'm gonna stay away. She was on fire. Um, yeah, you, you burn oranges, you just forgot to squeeze. And, if they if they had they end up winning the first set, but if they had punched them in the face, yeah, they would have folded. Like they just would have. You just kept them around too early. Yeah, they, you let them hang around. Yeah, and then you could see them. So the set sets two, th- uh, three, four, and five. We're on their side. We're on the San Diego side, next to the coaches, right? And their bench. And Jay, you could hear, you could see them just kind of going. Oh boy! Hey, this could happen. <laughs> like this could happen, Jay. They and they're saying it out loud. Like, oh my goodness, they're not playing well. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's 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 you know the good part it's San Diego, and yeah. we'll go back out there the twenty second, I think. Uh, back out to San Diego. Yeah, yeah. back out because that was the first trip to San Diego. I got you. And you know it's San Diego State. Sure. And right. And so you get you get that whole thing. It is a weird arena because it it's like they took the old stadium and just put a basketball arena in it yeah like in the hole here have some basketball yeah like yeah like it was the like here and then it is the old-fashioned bowl like floor straight up straight up yeah <laughs> those are the, i used to call those prison stadiums yeah so you can't run out of there yeah <laughs> so they can shoot down at you oh well, <laughs> oh, yeah you know what I mean? that's what i used to call them i played in one of high school i was like dang like we keep there's no escaping here well you're looking at it we've i felt bad because so you came in at the top yeah and the the majority of people were senior citizens yeah they, they yeah they the first six rows they that's all they're getting 
Well, in the top six rows, I mean. Oh, 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 they was bailing. You could just see them yeah. make make business decisions, yeah. right? Yeah, like, we got beat traffic. Like, nah, we cool. Like, I'm 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 okay on row thirty because because yeah. then if you have to go to the bathroom, you got to go back up. Yeah, from wherever you whatever decision you make. Yeah, it it's it's wild, and they get it's that thing, Jay. Then it, today's a travel day, an early travel day. So we got up, we got on the bus at six thirty, just Dang. to get back this morning just to get back you know yeah. half hour ago and tomorrow tee it up again they tee it up against the team that last they saw them put a put a whooping on them. well you know sometimes that's good when you let one go and then you get to you know face the team that beat you last time you, you there's no time to really lick your wounds or lose lose any concentration you gotta get back right at it so you should be motivated especially because you're playing at home. So well, it's Asia O'Neal, right? The yeah. number one pick in the whole thing. And oh, she's playing like it. <laughs> she's playing like, oh yeah, no, no, right. no. This no, they got it right. <laughs> they got it right. And then she's got two bandits with her. She that her and the, her two girls, they're gay. They're gay. So uh tomorrow night it'll be interesting. Uh it'll be fun. Um, but yeah. You know, and then trying to keep track of everything that was going on and come back here and get locked in again. So, yeah, I mean, it's uh, always good. I mean, we got, we're going to take this segment a little bit longer. I mean, we were going to get in the spring ball, but it, 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 it kind of ties into Adam Carricker had um, Luke McCaffrey on. And I guess one of the bigger questions that almost <clears throat> made national news and Luke McCaffrey was on other shows, he said he never was asked to switch to receiver while at Nebraska or any other places before he decided to make the switch at Rice. Mm -hmm. um, and he looks like he's probably going to get drafted. He ran like a 4-4-5 four, four, athletic, athletic ability runs deep in that in that family. His dad was a great athlete. His mom was the is the best athlete in the family. Found it interesting because what got omitted was they – were not open to being asked. It was quarterback or bust while he was at Nebraska. I think it was kind of a situation to where you want to play, play receiver. He started to actually like it. Didn't seem so bad. Boom. There we go. Um, but tied to that DP mm -hmm. was a coach at Nebraska at the time. Scott Frost was interviewed by Dennis Dodd. And if you know Dennis Dodd, he's always, he works with CBS college football writer. He writes some articles. He, he definitely, he, he he's straight to the point. And I don't know whether he's bored or not, or maybe he was just too mad that Nebraska was getting too much love with Matt Rule. But he interviewed Scott Frost, and he says, in the, the headline says, Scott Frost dying for a chance to coach after growing older, wiser from disappointing Nebraska tenure. Um, You know, you know, Scott goes on to say that he's dying to get back in. His first time in his life, he didn't know what was next because it was assumed that, you know, generally, you know, the coaching, hey, you take the complimentary year off, you're right back in. It didn't happen. So I'm asking you, is this a desperate attempt or do you think is uh, really there's been a come to Jesus that, okay, I'm, I'm older and, and wiser for Scott? I would preface this by asking the question: Do you think Scott is a is an intelligent person? I think. I mean, as far as like knowing offense, no, I, just, like we know that he like Scott's not stupid. I mean, listen, I, I, look, I, I've, I've right, like I, I've I, look, I, I've whether Scott wants to hear it or not, you know, he, 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 what, I mean, if he walked right in, I'd tell him. Here's the here's the problem I've always had with Scott. You question my integrity, dude. I laid my integrity on for you, for you more times than not when I didn't have to. That's something that you don't ever do with me. You could do that with anybody else. You could do it with other people. Just you, if you didn't know that, you then you just don't know me. That's yeah. your problem. That's yeah. that's a you problem. Yeah. That's a Scott yeah. Frost problem. I don't, but no, I don't think Scott's stupid. That that he's very smart. He's very intelligent. I think sometimes you can get your judgment cloud based on this. We've all been there. We've all made mistakes. We've all had dumb things we've all done and you and you can be like five years later like how the heck did i make that stupid decision i've had them plenty and nobody's perfect so 
I, I I think sometimes when you're out of the out of the out of the 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 loop, I think sometimes you have to have you know the best person to come to terms with or have a conversation with a real, is a frank conversation if you can have it with yourself and well, take I'm, yourself re- reflection. Yeah, will he listen to himself? Because I, I, well, if you go if you go to this article, I think it says. Well, he, I'm just—I can only go off what I read. Okay, I ain't heard from him. Yeah, I sent him four or five texts. He, he yeah. must be mad. Well, hey, hey, well, hey he's well, still back. Hey, you know what? This is what. But, listen, but see, I like. You're I telling like, me everything. I like you're telling me everything. Here's thing. what I like, though. Okay. Well, if you're gonna be petty, just be petty to 100. percent Well, that, but, okay, but that's, I like that. That's the question when I, see I have. You, your new name is Pat. Right. Right. Okay, you ain't Scott so, no more. You Petty Frost. That's cool. I, then we cool with it because you know what? I can get petty too. I I you know, I, I, I petty for I, I grade me, but I just call myself Pete. I, I do, <laughs> petty Pete. Yeah. I I grade intelligence by your ability to accept lessons. Right. Yeah. You don't have to be perf- perfect. We're not saying that. But when a lesson comes to you, are you willing to accept the new space that you're about to be in, and carrying old petty things? is not a sign of that you've learned the lesson or that you've accepted anything beyond that, that you're still holding on to a thing. First of all, Nebraska, he shouldn't even, he should be talking about Nebraska football as a player and as a coach, but why would you refer back to it if you're trying to move forward? You don't ha- again, it's the Godfather thing. To, to be fair, in the article, he didn't want to talk about Nebraska. Well, you could just say, well, what we know about Scott is Scott won't answer a question you don't want to answer. Right. <laughs> right. And he didn't answer that one. He uh, said, I don't you know, talk about it. It's the Godfather thing. Don't, yeah, you, I don't, mean, I think, I, I, don't be out here talking it, about the family because that tells the next person you date yeah. that you aren't loyal to this thing. I think, <laughs> I, I think, I think Scott had, the, he, I don't think he's, I, I think he's learned some lessons. He's had to. I, I don't, I do not. It could be only, here's why I can, here's what, here's the only thing I can go back on. I think he learned a lesson from the first year he started to the second. And the lessons that he learned are life lessons that I think that he, that, it, that allowed him to be the college football coach of the year and turn UCF around in essentially like 12 months, right? You didn't get to Nebraska or you didn't get a head coaching job at U, UCF by being a dummy. You know what I mean? Um, the, Chip Kelly saw something in him, and he he was always he won the Art Broyles Award and all the other stuff. He's coached Marcus Mariota, the 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 everything he's done. Now I think I was I think he got over his skis here. I, I mean that's that's it. But I also say it wasn't all his fault though. I think I think the maybe lack of true leadership and and, and from you know, like maybe Bill Moose, and then look, you you allowed him to come in and kind of reset the roster, which you expected him to do, right? What you thought he needed to do. So you go from like a on time, like like age wise roster to one of the youngest teams in the nation. COVID hits. You don't have any winning tradition. You don't have anybody that knows what it like to work or what it, what a championship tradition is. It's been it's been just ripped from the university long before Scott got here. He was he was dealing with things that were in this university long before he stepped foot back in Nebraska. So, but then you don't have any way to fix it because you're nobody's working, you're chilling, right? And then you then next thing you know you're you're playing against more veteran teams, teams that know what winning's like, and just better players coming out of COVID. All the while, everybody was able to look at some of your, you know bruises or you know your some of your 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 things that you weren't doing well as a football team or as a coach and then it can't became the spiral now you got a little you probably got a little bit of surly with the media but that's just part of the deal probably that's probably one of the things he probably needs to realize and that's look i would have never expected scott to, to even take that interview especially with dennis dodd yeah, that, that's I, not yeah. the dude but that lets you that lets me know he's had he's had to have some sort of not maybe a full epiphany something has gone in the right direction to accept this right here. But we know, we know 30 media members who would have done a fluff piece for Scott Frost. Dennis Dodd ain't one of them. Right. But that lets you, that lets me know though, that lets me know that because here's, here's, here's what I'm saying. 
if, if it would have been a fluff piece, then I'm like, okay, then you're doing the same thing. The fact that he took this interview with this dude at his crib in Scottsdale or wherever he's at, wherever he lives, lets you know that it's different. Scott ain't letting nobody go to, around his crib, right? He's got kids and stuff. So you letting him in. Now, is it strategic? Sure. But then that lets me know you're actually being smart about it. Because if you want to get back in, you're not getting back in based on call, a favor. You're getting back in by doing the things you need to get do to get back in the game. And he's willing to be a coordinator, and he's willing to go probably a smaller college again. So it lets me know you actually really I mean, want to coach. I, I think there's several questions. One, whether he should. Um, because oh, I think he need. I, I think have you healed? Have you healed? Have you have you accepted lessons? All the bruises, scratches, etc. Have you healed? And then what'd you learn from it? And quite frankly, that next question you asked was the level. Well, the, the thing is, though, time heals all, not heals all wounds, but helps deal with stuff. So he's had time, right? Um, if you would have said Scott left here, got fired, and he's a head coach six months later, the answer is, no, nah, you, ain't, you ain't dealt with some of the stuff. You, you haven't, because you got to think, when you got fired from, the, when you get fired from Nebraska, you got fired four times because you played here. Because you were a probably one of the first power five, five star recruits to ever leave Nebraska, come back, win a national champ. It, there's the, the history. Your mom's an Olympian. Your dad's in the Nebraska every single Hall of Fame. Both of them are. Your mom's one of the best female athletes to step foot on this campus. So it's the family thing. And so for him to, for the level and saying that he wants to give, for him to take the interviews, let me at least learn some lessons. My read on it is that he does want to get back into coaching because it's been two years since we've mm -hmm. heard from the guy, right? So this feels very strategic, like, hey, let's get my name back out there. Sure. Hey, agent, can you set this up? Or, hey, Scott, I was approached about this. I know you're thinking about getting back into coaching. You want to take this interview? Fine. I didn't learn anything. Uh, I might be harsh about this article, but I didn't learn anything about Scott Frost, where his head's at, any of those lessons. And I think that's, again, strategic. If Scott Frost was done coaching, Maybe he does a tell all. No, I don't think he does, right? I don't think that's the yeah, type of guy Scott Frost is. Either. But but if he was going to, it would be because he's done coaching. Because he knows yeah. once he puts all that stuff out there on the record, he's probably not getting back into coaching. Yeah. So I yeah. think this was just a hey, here's a little something. Hey, Scott Frost is still out there. I think it was set up strategically to get Scott Frost's right. name back into conversations. Yeah, as it job. should be, and it's strategic, and that's part of the process that you have to do. I don't think you're ever gonna get like an apology from him. Um, because really, to be honest with you, some of the reason why it wasn't successful wasn't his fault. So, and, I, and that's I, that's just that's to me that's he has fault, and so does the, the situation have fault. Um, now, there's things I think you know he probably hopefully things that he could do better. I think that the time will tell, and this is when you'll really know is he gets another job, whether a coordinator, a high, like a high end coordinator or a coordinator job or a receiver job and whatever he gets next. And then he starts to have success. And then you kind of have the second coming. That'll tell you. That'll tell you. Because to just say he's five years older, you're 50 something years old. You've already been to the mountaintop. You've been down. You've been out of coaching. You've worked your way up. You had to get humbled. You've had to do what you need to, need to do. Right. You, you're not a head coach right off the get go. And then you, maybe you go and you're a head coach at say, Akron or something like it's just some you know like Northwest it, Missouri State. Yeah, was, yeah, that's probably a little bit too low, but the, it, but Akron or something like that, and then boom, you're back up, and then you're on the national stage. Then you're up for say a bigger job, and say you take the job. What do you do differently when you're in that type of profile? That's you know, organically different than what you did the first time. That'll tell you because you won't you won't hear it. You won't you won't. He might have he might have voiced some of the things he's done and this dude ain't put it in there. You know what I, you get? You know, you know what I'm saying? You only will tell by your action. You can't tell me you got to show me. I, I, I lean on that. There's a bridge he has to cross. That some athletic director or every athletic director and certainly every fan base for the money that he's going to require to do anything. That they're going to ask the question. What went wrong at Nebraska? And we need to hear everything. There's not, there's not an athletic director worth a plug nickel 
who doesn't ask the question. They need to ask. Scott France needs to tell him, but he doesn't have to tell Dennis Dodd. No. And the thing is, he needs. you know what he needs? He needs an athletic director. Well, and this is where it might work out well, right? Where I, I, I think for me, I think Bill Moose would have got fired on the spot if you couldn't hire him. If you couldn't, if you couldn't get on it, look, we could have, we even said it, we could have went down and done that, but okay. That's your, your lucky man. You're there. Here's the difference. Scott Frost now needs somebody to take a chance on him. That's the difference. You're not in the power seat anymore. So with that being said, that has to be a connection right off the rip that he wasn't able to have that the respect is there. So now you got to respect me when I call you, I got to respect you when I call you. That means we got to go through some muddy waters together. And then if he can get somebody like that and they stay together, that means nobody jumps ship quick when, thing, when things get a little bit good. Then you might see, you know, coming on the back end. But also he needs to understand that, dude, listen, I will tell you this is what you call it. Yeah, hey, hey, bro. There's dudes out here that went to bat for you, man. You better be picking up the phone and don't call Tyrone. You better be calling people, man. I'm just telling you. Because there's dudes you you play with blood, sweat, and tears that put their put stuff on the line for it that you need to be calling because that's part of the what DP's talking about. That's part of it. You know what I mean? Hey, dude. Hey, man. I'm sorry. You know what? I was over my skis a little bit. I learned from it. Hope you, you know, for, for, was it forgiven for or don't forgive me, don't forget it, whatever it is. Is that what it is? Right? Everybody, dude. Everybody's if you haven't made one of those calls, now now if I do so. If I messed up or something and I called you two up and said, listen, man, I hope you, you don't have to forget because you can't forget, right? But you, can you forgive me? That, and then you choose not to, that actually doesn't become a Jay Foreman problem anymore. Well, when you, when you, quality people forgive and forget because they've already been through it. In the coaching business, you know people are going to screw up. That's just a part of it. That's, yeah, they're human. So, I'm rooting for Scott to get whatever Scott. He'll wants. get another chance. I, I just He'll don't. I, I'm curious as to, to 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 why it was done the way it was done. That's all. Because there are right. some media folks who have as much cachet as Dodd, and you could have really kind of done a whole full disclosure. America likes a recovery. I think. I think they I, love a recovery. I do think this is the first kind of like, you know, okay. I'm a huge Game of Thrones, so you start to find, you start to see like a 30 second trailer then you start to say okay this is catching this is the 30 second trailer you'll get the full one when he starts to get traction he's getting ahead of the game versus being late in the game so this is setting forth the path that you're gonna i guarantee you're gonna start hearing his name when the season's middle of the season you know when it kind of gets where you know hey, man this coach is on the hot seat he gone this offense is terrible you're gonna start hearing his name and it started with that article man anyways uh, great to have you back, DP. I know you're back on the road tomorrow, but, you know, I guess we say hi and bye real quick. <laughs> well, we stopped in to j just to check in. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you said, yeah, we had to check in. You, look, you know, we, I know you had a, a rough time out there in San Diego. We yeah, looked, yeah, we saw you brutal. out there. We were definitely jealous because it was brisk here yesterday. But Old School is back. The crew is back in full effect, 1040 O Street at the ticket. We're Old School. We'll holler at you tomorrow. Thank you.